you could tell there was a lot of pain. She had gone through a lot of pain in her life. And our arguments got pretty heated because I got tired. I was just like, hey, stop blaming me for this. Like, I, I'm clean. Right. And then one day she called me crying. I'm like, hey, do you want to come over? Do you want to spend the night? Do you want to talk? You want to relax? You know, just get away from your situation. You know, we can out. You know, I'm not an asshole. I don't hate you, but you're, you know, and I call her back and I said, you know what? Never mind. It's better that we cool off first. And I never saw her again. Right. Um, lessons learned from this is that, you know, I think I feel like there's a difference between women that do the online stuff where they sell the pictures of themselves online. And women that were actually in contact with men, like strippers and all that stuff. Right. Uh, I don't know exactly what the difference is. I, it's just this is this is a very these are very fascinating dates and dating that I've done with these women, but uh, I don't know if there's if there's some kind of difference besides that strippers had to be in contact with like creepy men or, or men on general, and maybe you know it's it's an it's an underworld right we don't, we don't know what happens you know unless you work at a strip club you don't know what happens with these women you don't know what they've been through you don't know what their the trauma they've been through you know i, I already know for a fact she went through generational trauma because she's first born <laughs> dominican right um and yeah she had a pretty decent relationship with her father she would be on the phone with him all the time i would hear stories of him all the time um and I mean, they seem to get along pretty good. And the mom, they had issues with the mom. She had issues with her mom, but dad, it was cool. And I met her family, you know, by accident, I met her family. And it just, it just never seemed like she, there was anything wrong with her. She just seemed normal up until that point, up until the point where she had to face the repercussions of, you know, sleeping around a lot. Right. And that's why guys, I always say you use protection, even, you know, it doesn't matter always use protection unless you're in love with the girl and you trust her that she's not sleeping around. Right. Uh, which, you know, I think wait until a relationship for that, um, you know, protect yourself because that's, it saves you a lot of pain. You don't know what these, like, you don't know what these women have, have done in their past lives. Now I'm not saying she, she deserves that. I'm not, that's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying that, uh, the women I've encountered have admitted uh, having an STD like that, right? One of them was a teacher, also a master's student, who was the daughter of a very big uh, United States gym chain, right? I'm not going to say the gym chain, right? But I met her. She was very nice, a uh, white chick, very, very nice, very respectful, very spunky. And she really liked me. And she, one day, she texts me and she says, Look, oh, no, she asked me over to her place. We went to the mall on a date. She asked me over to her place. I told her, look, I'm really tired. I got work early in the morning. Let's leave it for another day. And then we kind of, I think I got sent away on a job or something. I got busy and I came back and I said, hey, I haven't, why are you, I haven't talked to you. What's going on? I thought you kind of went ghost on me or whatever, you know, we were at that level. And she said, I have a medical condition. And if you heard about, if you hear about it, you're going to stop talking to me. And it was that. And I was just like, what do you want me to do? Like, you know, like, I, you're not my girlfriend. You're not. We just went on a couple dates and all that stuff. And thank God I said no that night. Right. But at the same time, like this is not to dehumanize these women in terms of that. But it, it's just one of the consequences of promiscuity is that, you know, and that it's very strange. It's very interesting how women who who decided to live this kind of lifestyle of promiscuity. Right. Um, tend to deal with these consequences, right? Every year she would text me. I think the last time she texted me was last year, November of last year. And she would always text me a long paragraph saying, you know, I really liked you. You were the one. I can't believe you, you know, you, you abandoned me. You've been in my, like just this long list of stuff, like paragraphs. And then she would delete it the next day. And she, I think now she's engaged or married because they're her, thing pop up on Facebook. And I think there was a ring like people you may know um, or something, but Jesus Christ, you know, she was very, uh, you know, it was a very tough uh, 
dealing with this person, right? Obviously, I think I went about it very well. I didn't want to make enemy out of her, you know, but I I ended up last year, I think last year, May or June. No, like, no, early last year, I ended up sitting down with her at a very public place. And I, you know, told her, hey, I never wanted to hurt you or your feelings and all that stuff. But you understand where I'm coming from. Uh, you know, if you want to be friends, I'm, I'm cool with that. I you're a good person. Um, and the saddest part about this, guys, is that she still the way she communicated to me was she still thought there was room for a relationship. And that kind of made me sad, right? I left that meeting. So she looked happy. She's like, okay, I gave her a hug. And, I, you know, I guess I just want to let her know, like, hey, there's no bad blood. The case in the future, if she ever tries something to hurt me or something. But I just want to let her know, hey, there's no bad blood. I still see you as human. I don't hate you. But you need to move on. You can't be sending me these crazy messages, you know. Uh, and, I, you know, I always tell women, like, hey, are you seeing somebody for your issues? But in a nice way. And she still kind of let the door open for uh, a future relation. I was like, I was taken aback. I was like, are you serious? Like, we don't we don't know each other anymore. It's been years since we even went on a date or hooked up, you know, and that that's was what she always wanted. Right. And the trend I see a lot with women that are, let's say, very sexual, or very comfortable with their sexuality and use it to get things very directly. It just seems that they're very entitled to men that they like. And that's the feeling I got about out of both of these women. They seemed incredibly entitled to me. Like minimal effort. You're the guy I want. This is it. Let's go. Right. And then when I dated normal women, and when I say normal, I mean normal women like women that don't do uh, sex work. It just seemed like it was a step, like it was very stepped up, stepped process. Um, there wasn't any like rush to do anything. Obviously, my ex girlfriend, she by the third date, she asked, "Hey, if we hook up, what are we gonna be like? What is the future for us? You know, I want to know." And I said, "Yeah, let's try this out. You know, I like you, you like me. Um, I, I'm that's I'm not saying you're my girlfriend, but let I'm." I'm okay with, you know, doing the next step, which is like hanging out more and doing more stuff outside of dates and stuff like that. You know, maybe spending a weekend to kind of test the waters, but uh, it was always stepped and slow and, and, you know, but for, for the ex stripper and OF chick, it just seemed like it was like, let's go, like, come on, we're moving in together and you, you know, and once it just felt like, like, hey, I'm a person too. Like, yeah, you're a very attractive girl, both of you. Uh, but it's, you know, like you can't just, you can't just, you're the one, your way to my heart. Like, that's not how that works. But that's how I felt. I felt kind of like, this is very strange. Um, and I didn't believe it. I, that's another thing. I didn't believe it. I didn't believe that an ex stripper who's, her job was to tell men, to make men feel loved and important, even though she didn't give a shit about them, is telling me, that she gave a shit about me, right? And I think that's where it comes. Like, there's, there's two type of guys. There's guys that believe it, and there's guys that are just like they could never believe that a sex worker likes them for them. And that's and that's one of the big lessons here that I learned from their perspective and what they go through, right? Because sex workers have they have to play into the male fantasy, right? It's all fantasy. If you guys look at adult films, if you guys uh, like hear stories of Patrice O'Neill when he went to Brazil. Or if you, uh, you know, you see these OF chicks on uh, Red Meat Podcast or Access Vegas or anything like that, the way they talk, it's almost like they're trying to build the fantasy uh, world, right? It's their brand to build the fantasy world around the, the male sexual experience, right? Men need sexual compliance. They need, they need to know that the girl they're with likes them for them, at least the illusion of it. Right. And if you like look at all the premise for adult films, like how these women act on podcasts and like me dating and or going to a strip club, go to a strip club. You'll see it. Um, it They're all fooling you into thinking you're awesome and you're amazing. And I want to have sex with you or be around you or talk to you because you're amazing. Right. OF has parasocial relationships where they message uh, men all day uh, and tell them, hey, thank uh, checking up on them and and all that. Uh, adult films, they have, uh, what do you call it? 
Uh, adult films have premises and scenarios that could happen technically. Don't often, but could happen. And where the guy is just a normal guy and the girl and the woman is a very hot secretary, stepmom, stepsister. And the and the reason it works is because it's it's belie- it's almost believable. It's almost like you know, like going to the strip club, you go there and a girl sits on your lap, talks to you, you pay her money, and she's asking about her day. That's her job. That's her skill, right? Her skills make you think she cares about you, like deeply as a person. So when girl number one or girl number two reveals, hey, I'm actually an OnlyFans girl, or I find out girl number two is an ex stripper, right? And then they're saying things like, Hey, you're amazing, Nuke. Like you, you are the guy I've always wanted. Like I wanted you're the you're my type. Blah blah blah. How am I supposed to believe that, right? Because that's your job. Your job is to talk to me in a way to make me feel like I'm special and important, and not like those other guys, right? So that's that's what these women face, right? Because the savvy guys aren't don't believe them, right? They're like, yeah, yeah, cool, yeah, sure. Let's just just keep hooking up. I don't believe, like, I don't believe that a stripper likes me for me. Like what the heck? Um, only gullible guys really would fall for that inside of a strip club. So yeah, no one really takes them seriously. Be- That's one of the biggest reasons besides the whole, you know, t- having the promiscuity thing, right? Is that it's hard to believe a woman like that. You're very, you know, they seem manipulative. They seem like everything they say is to make you feel something. Um, and if you guys don't believe me, uh, a lot of the Red Pill Red Meat podcasts have uh, adult film actresses, right? And nothing against them, right? But the way they talk, it's like they're still in character, right? Like you're talking to the brand, and that's what I was thinking, right? I'm ta- am I talking to the brand or am I talking to the girl, right? Do you like me? Do you really like me? Like, do you really like me because? I'm a cool and awesome, or do you like me because that's the only thing you know? That's the only way you talk to men, right? Is this something you're gonna say to me? You know, get a vacation out of me or two, and then leave me do something else. You know, go to another guy. You know, like how was I supposed to know? So I did the right thing. The right thing is to be, you know, assume all women are promiscuous, obviously, and just don't believe them, right? And that's not my fault because between me and her, I'm looking out for me. So, yeah. <laughs>